Oh, hello there. Welcome back to this second episode of the Gibbering GM. And in this episode, I'm going to ask you to play your attributes and not yourself. My name's In Wills, and welcome to the In Crowd. Hello and welcome back. I am a GM, a game master, and here I am gibbering. Yes, that's what this video is all about. It's when I get to talk to you about some of the issues that I like to rant or praise or talk about um, within fancy role-playing games. Now, so if you didn't catch my first video, then please do go back and have a look at it. I had a real jibber about, is that, is that a word? I had a right gibbering about backgrounds and characters' backgrounds and had a plea to say to people, don't put too much into it. Anyway, if you would like to see that video, then there will be a card up here somewhere for you to have a look at. Okay then, so what are we going to talk about today? Well, we're going to talk about attributes and players and how the two blend together in the game. Now, I've actually been playing role-playing games since I was a wee lad. You know, teenager life was absolutely um, immersed in first edition uh, Dungeons and Dragons. So I've been a GM or dungeon master for some quite, for quite some time. And any RPG that I've actually played or GM'd, um, the characters have always had a range of abilities or characteristics. These are normally separated out into physical characteristics such as strength, dexterity, agility, constitution, and mental characteristics such as intelligence or charisma or wisdom or, or, or even power when it comes to magic users. There's a number of ways in which games or rule sets encourage you to actually roll your attributes or to calculate them, whether or not that will be four D6s and discarding the lowest one or the the option that I much prefer, which is more of a point system when you get X amount of points and you allocate it to your attributes or characteristics on a one to one basis. In some rules, you get uh, minimum requirements for characteristics. So, for example, it might be that you have to have a characteristic higher than a certain number to be a cleric or to be a paladin or to be a fighter. Now, Mithras, the rule system that I play, um, there's no minimum requirement at all. And and that, I think, is a good thing. But anyway, the, the other thing that often happens is that in some systems, you have what's known as a throwaway stat or throwaway ability. You know, sometimes um, the game might not actually depend heavily on somebody with a high charisma score, for example. And even in the Mithras rule set, um, charisma, although is a base for some of the social and interaction skills, also um, provides a modifier to your experience roles, which is what you use to increase your skills. So when you make up your character, you have these various skills. And what I really think is that the physical skills, the so strength, dexterity, constitution, etc., are played well. You know, you can tell the strong fighters, you can tell those people who are very dexterous by the way they hurl their knives or fire their bow or swing their double hand headed battle axe. However, I feel that the mental characteristics are engaged with less so. So let me give you an example of this. So magic users or spellcasters usually have high intelligence or power and they in various systems they can do more spells or they get better casting rates because of that high intelligence. 
sometimes I think there's a, a bit of a conflict between the characteristic or attribute of the player and that of the character. Now, when it comes to the physical characteristics, these do not usually go into play because we don't ask the player to lift or break through a door. It's all done on strength rolls or brawn rolls within the game. But the interesting thing that I find is when mental attributes come into play. And this is when there can often be uh, a reliance or uh, almost like a requirement for the intelligence, say, of a character to match that of a player or vice versa. Now, I'm a very liberal GM, if there is such a one, and I'm really keen for players to play characters that they might, that might be completely different to their own characteristics. So I'm quite a, a weedy sort of person and I quite like playing um, melee characters with that strength um, and or, dext or dexterous characters. But when it comes to a mental character, a character with high intelligence, often it's almost like said that the player has to exhibit those skills. Now, some players are really good at this and they sort of like play their character despite their own personal level of intelligence, you know, with a low intelligence, which is brilliant. And then there are the almost like annoying characters or players that I, as a GM, I, I'm not very much in favour of, or the people who say, um, oh, I know the answer to that riddle, it's the moon, but of course my character doesn't know that and everybody is aware then and you know and that that's what i really would like to talk about this idea that people should play their character with their attributes and not themselves and that if a character does have a high intelligence then it's important for the player to play that high intelligence. And this does not mean that they have to be, a, you know, a member of Mensa and have an IQ of 150. The game should support that. So, for example, if I was down a dungeon with my 18 intelligence or my 50 intelligence um, magic user and we came across a puzzle, the idea in my head as a GM is that the the characters solve the puzzle not the players and this can often cause some conflict and i i want to sort of like allow the magic user to roll uh, its intelligence save or an idea roll or or a memory roll or its magic skills in order to sort of like say yeah well done you your your character solved that rather than relying on the actual players to solve it. I, I do think there comes a, a further conflict when somebody who has put a whole load of their attributes into strength, dexterity and constitution, then actually plays their intelligence incorrectly because they're playing as a player rather than as the character. And I think it's very difficult to make that connection or separation. In a similar way, charisma can also have that impact or that conflict. And we're currently having a um, discussion in the Discord chat about which character should lead the party. And although many people might think Hengist, the ironclad warrior, should lead, because of his nobility, he actually has a charisma of four, which is very low. And well, somebody who might not, might have a high charisma, might not actually want to lead. And so there's a difference there between their character and their, the player. And I, I sometimes feel that when we're playing, when we're doing role playing games, it should be apparent, it should be obvious what our actual attributes are or the character's attributes from how we're playing and I think that is something that I've always struggled with in the past as a GM to almost like encourage that and to 
make it so that the the players are playing their characters so their attributes are actually visible or um, apparent. So I hope that all made sense and I would really like to hear your um, solutions to that in the comments below. So how do you deal with attributes that might be different between the player and the um, character? I understand the, the strength and the physical ones, but how do you actually make that connection with the mental attributes or the charisma attributes? So do let me know in the comments below. And just to let you know, next the next video after this one is going to be about skills and whether or not we can actually make that connection between player and character with the skills. So if you've enjoyed this video, then please consider liking, commenting and subscribing. And don't forget to press that bell button so you get a notification when my next video goes live. And if you would like to um, support the channel with a little bit of extra support, then the link to my Buy Me A Coffee and Patreon link is in the comments below. And that's it for another Gibbering GM. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have created this and I look forward to hearing your comments down below. Until next time, look after yourself and I will catch you all later. And until then, happy DMing or GMing. Have fun. See ya. Bye.